Hold on guys, I'll be back in a second. I've got to answer this. They keep ringing me, this guy. I'm not sure who it is though. Hello? Ah, Stefano. Um, yeah, we're playing you guys in the first knockout round of the Champions League, aren't we? Mm -hmm, okay. Um, look, I don't think we're going to sell any players to you because obvious reasons, but fire away. Jonata? Absolutely not. No, no chance. Dumbia? Nope, same. Bussero, no, Bussero does not want to leave. We discussed this a few months ago. He was fine staying. He could have joined Manchester United. He was happy to stay here, okay? Is that everything? I can see what you're doing here. You're trying to disrupt my really good squad harmony. I'm not having it, okay? See you in a few months' time. Bye. Um, oh, no, I've missed the message now, too. Unbelievable stuff. What does Bussero want? Boss, I can't believe you turned down the Milan offer. I love Milan. My heart is in Milan more than Vosonga. I want to leave. Sneaky buggers. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 127 of Who Civic Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up in today's episode is the first knockout round of the Champions League. We are going to play the first leg of that one away against AC Milan. We've also got a bit of transfer business as well. So if you are looking forward to today's episode then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up. On the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but this is what the first knockout round for the Champions League does look like off the back of yesterday's episode we played our last two games of the group stage and did have the draw for this first knockout round so if you missed that one I'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner but we did top our group and our reward for that was a tie against AC Milan, a bit of an update on how these guys are looking before we get stuck in to what's coming up in today's episode. They are still in third in the city uh, after a few months have gone by off the back of yesterday's episode, another four and a half star reputation club, but it does look like a fairly aging team, I think it's fair to say, with the likes of Kessi, Tanali in the defensive midfield, Bakayo Tomori and Mainyan in goal. I think there's a lot of players in this AC Milan team we're going to be getting on an age at this stage of the save. Of course, we are now in 2032, so it's going to be an interesting matchup here. We are certainly up against it, but off the back of topping our group, hopefully we can do decently here in the first knockout round of the Champions League and maybe make the quarterfinals of this competition for the first time. Although, as I said, we are definitely outsiders going into this one, especially the away leg at the San Siro, but we are just shy of the transfer window opening up here domestically. We'll get into it more off the back of the first leg of this first knockout round tie. The main thing that you guys need to be kept up with so far, we have been able to keep all of our key players, despite the fact that AC Milan have actually came after quite a few of them, especially in January when, of course, the European transfer window did open very, very sneaky stuff from them there. And unfortunately, it's kind of worked because Bussero Gay now wants to leave the club, is asking to leave off the back of a bid from AC Milan. Of course, we had this problem not too long ago. We decided we could sell him to Manchester United or a team like that for around the 13 million mark. In the end, he actually decided that he wanted to stay, but now he has changed his mind. Yet again, he is more in and out than a KFC driver at this stage is Bussero Gay. So his dynamics at the moment, his morale is not very good. Thankfully, the other players that they did come in for that has not been an issue with the likes of Lasana Dumbia, as well as Jonata on our bench as well. He is still wanted by quite a few big clubs, as you can see there. But Bussero Gay has definitely dropped in morale because we did tell him that we did need to keep him because it was really hard to find someone anywhere near as good as Bussero Gay who is interested in coming to Volsunga, let alone for that £13.5 million price that we did set for him back when Manchester United and those other European clubs were interested give or take, around six months ago. So he said, bad luck, you're going to have to stay, and he hasn't taken it too well, but hopefully he can still perform well here in these upcoming games against AC Milan, and we might be able to prove to him that he would be better off here at Volsunga anyway. But as I said, that has been the real only transfer stuff that's been going on in regards to the first team. We've been able to keep all of our players 
that we did have for the group stages where we did top that group just above Leicester City thanks to our goal differential with Raul Sociedad dropping in to the Europa League and where Ross County were the whipping boys leading into this game we have started off the deal de Bacar, just a few competitive games leading into this one but two very very comfortable wins 9-0 there over Salfos hat trick to Rakasan and to Zimmerman in that one and then we put out the rotation team in our most recent game away at Poor and two hat tricks there to Traore and Joe Nata as we did pick up a 6-0 win so it's looking pretty good for us domestically to start off 2032 hopefully again we can pick up the league cup but that is our competitive football that we have had under our belts leading into the first leg of this tie against AC Milan that's just the one concern I do have going into this one that we might be just a little bit underdone in terms of competitive football this first knockout round of whatever European competition we do end up in the knockouts of that's usually one of the ones I am most nervous of because where the Icelandic season does fall but thankfully those deal with car games do just give us a little bit of competitive football to work with before we do get stuck into things but I think that's all that we do need to cover off going into the first leg of this tie as I said it's going to be the only game of today's episode with that month gap in between this one and the second leg back here in Iceland and we'll see if we can take a decent result into that second leg tomorrow as we do take on AC Milan from the San Cielo. And here is the TV coverage for this one. The team sheets there is AC Milan playing a 4-2-3-1 as I said. Quite an ageing team there. I think it is fair to say in 2032. A few things I forgot to mention before. We are unfortunately suffering a few injuries early on here in the season. Both Fabio Mariano and Chaka Traore unavailable for this first leg. That means that Anasson and Nygaard are on the bench. But those are our only changes as we kick off the away leg here at the San Cielo. And only four minutes into this one, we do have the first highlight. AC Milan trying to pick out someone there at the far post. Boreal does deal with it, but then Calabria is in a lot of space here down the right-hand side. He tries to size up here, I believe. That would be with Nicholas Zimmerman. Back to Calabria. Goes far post, and Kjagard gets his head on the end of that. And that is an absolute disaster of a start for us here in the away leg of the first knockout round of the Champions League. Very early on, AC Milan already a goal up. Simple one, two there between Calabria and Tenali. And Kjagard is able to get the aerial supremacy there at the far post. And we are 1 0 down early here away from home. And only five minutes later, we are back down the AC Milan end here for a corner. And somehow Fiate gets that past both Will Lurvik and Boreal, who was on the line. And this is a horrible start for us here in the first knockout round. We need to wake up soon. Otherwise, we're going to need to perform a big performance tomorrow at home in Iceland. Already two here the goals and we're down 2-0. And all the way forward to the 28-minute mark, it is still complete domination in this game so far from AC Milan. Absolutely on the ropes off the back of that early double. They did get a good interception there from Kenny Boreal. We are yet to have a shot on target in this one. Good ball there from Aguirre though and Kalen Rakasan puts that. Top right corner, that is exactly what we needed, our first decent chance that we have been shown in this one, and we pull a goal back, and hopefully that gives us a chance, even if the scoreline did stay like this. Of course, our form in the group stages at home, very, very good. We absolutely battered Real Sociedad and Leicester City, so we could potentially overturn a deficit in the home league, but a goal there could be very important. Back to 2-1 here at the half-hour mark. And inside the first minute of two of injury time here in this first half, they play a free kick short there to AC Milan. We do deal with it, although we give the ball back to AC Milan. Kyaga gets a shot off. It comes off the woodwork. Thankfully, we nearly gift AC Milan their two goal advantage back. But 2-1 at half time, and we haven't been playing that well. I'm not too disappointed with, even though, as you can see on screen, AC Milan dominating things stats-wise. So that really rocky opening there could prove very important in this tie. I do think it is fair to say we're going to make a few changes here. Both of our wingers not performing well without Chaka Traore on the bench. That does mean that Janata is going to have to play out on the left-hand side and we'll also bring on Patrick Nygaard out on the right, of course, without Fabio Mariano on the bench as well. So two players coming off the bench here at halftime will tell the boys we're not too happy with how things are going so far and hopefully we'll get a reaction 2-1 down at halftime in the away league. And about 20 minutes into the second half, we do have our first highlight of it. You will notice that Kalen Rakasan has picked up just a little 
orange injury, so we might have to deal with that shortly. Paul Stein Anderson, the most notable option for us on the bench, of course, with Fabio Maliano not being available for this game alongside Chaka Chare. We boot that D, but AC Milan do keep possession, but Matthias Aguirre, good foot in there from him. We do get possession back. He can, he squared, he picks out Joe Nada. He gets a goal off the bench. The Brazilian come Frenchman will score for us, and we get this back to two. All that could be a big momentum swing in this tie off the back of going 2-0 down early. Great work there from our Peruvian striker. Squares it for Joe Nada. Just enough on that to get past the goalkeeper. Two all here coming up to the 65-minute mark, and we are going to make that last substitution with Rakasan on an orange injury. Paul Stein Anason will come on for him for these last 25 minutes. And 10 minutes off the back of that equaliser and last substitution it is AC Milan here looking to retake the lead, and they are on the attack here. Alvarez with a shot from outside the box. Thankfully, that is pretty much straight at Huelovic, although we will still have to see the corner here and deal with this. Of course, they did score from one of these earlier in the game. Thankfully, Matthias Aguirre does deal with that one, and hopefully that's going to keep the scoreline at 2 all. And indeed, it will with an offside flag there with 15 minutes left. And up to the 85-minute mark here, we do have a free kick from just outside the box. Lasana Dumbia tries to put that in the top left corner, that would have been a great result to take back to Iceland after being 2-0 down early. We are starting to time waste now because I'm actually pretty happy with this result as it does stand. We do have a late corner here at the 90-minute mark. We try and pick someone out there at the near post, and it might be AC Milan here with a counter-attack. Thankfully, Lasana Dumbia does get the ball back for us here. Can we get someone for on goal? Nygaard from a tight angle there, but Ruggieri... Just gets in the way of the goal. That was nearly another defensive shocker there from AC Milan. But we are coming up towards full time. In the end, I am quite happy with that result after we did concede two goals there inside the first 10 minutes, both through headed goals. So that's something we might need to work on before the second leg in tomorrow's episode. But we came back well with that first half goal to Rakasan in that second half one to Jonada, both assisted by Matthias Aguirre in a two-all draw going back to Iceland considering our form from the group stages at home in this competition. This European season is not bad at all. Hopefully that little bit of momentum that we did get from those last two goals might see us through in that second leg in tomorrow's episode. But that certainly finished off a lot better than it was looking early on there in that first leg of the first knockout round. We are going to be taking a two-all draw back to Iceland for the second leg in tomorrow's episode. We'll come back shortly and run you guys through the transfer business that we have done early on here in this window before we wrap up today's episode. And before we do get into the transfer business that we have done now, the window has just opened a quick injury update there because of course Kalen Rakasan was forced from the field during the second half of that first knockout round first leg. Luckily, it is just a gash lower leg, so he is definitely going to be back for that second leg in tomorrow's episode, all things going well, just a one to three day injury also, seeing as I did forget it before the game, you can see there, Chaka Chare up top with a pulled calf muscle, he's out for seven days to two weeks, Fabio Mariano a twisted ankle, five days to two weeks, they should also both be back for that second leg in tomorrow's episode, so we should hopefully be back at full strength, and hopefully can make our way through to the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time off the back of that come from behind. So all draw, but it is time for us to get into our business so far in this transfer window. And here it is on screen, obviously, with this being the first day that the transfer window is open. We haven't done too much yet. There's certainly still some more areas I am looking at strengthening, but one of the key areas I am looking at improving in this transfer window is trying to improve the quality of our homegrown club and nation players. We can certainly improve on some of that we do have here at the club at the moment, the likes of Bjarki Barkasson. Stamatis Chartzakis, I do think that is an area we can certainly improve on with £5 million in our transfer budget. It does feel like that might be one of the areas that's best suited for this current window, especially considering how well our first 11 currently are getting on. I might also try and maybe improve on the wings and up front. I think it might be time that we do try and improve the attacking side of this team, albeit we do still have Joe Nara waiting in the wings and he could end up being a very, very good striker, I think, by the looks of the clubs that are interested in him. And we do still have the likes of Blagovest Ogninov, and we do have Chaka Chare on the bench as well. So we could just have to change a few parts of our current squad to improve that attacking free, even though they're actually doing pretty well at the moment in the knockouts 
of the Champions League, but we'll start with the outs, just a few ones here that you might have noticed from recent seasons. Miguel Monroy, his contract was going to expire soon after a few years out on loan at HK. Unfortunately, HK didn't put a bid in for him. He has gone back to Spain to Ibar for £250,000, which is not bad at all for a player we picked up on a free transfer a few seasons ago after he did leave Real Madrid. You can see there after one season at Cadiz, he did go to HK the last two seasons. Did a pretty good job for those guys too, helping them get to the Champions League in the first of those seasons. But he did decide to go back to Spain, down to La Liga too. So that's our most profitable transfer so far of this window. A few young guys have left on free transfers to Valerakovic and Torfesen, to Hafnafshadol there and Heltason and also to Akranes there and Gubjonsson. So a few of our younger players who didn't have much transfer value anyway, we have let them go on a free to those fellow Icelandic clubs. And also, Haralda Palson is a player who has been purchased recently, a player who came for our youth intake. He has gone to HK for £30,000. And with that deal, there is also a little bit of percentage of next sale included in that one as well. So those are out, out so far. Four ins at the moment. These are all deals that we did do as free transfers. But as you can see on screen, we do have to pay a little bit of compensation for these deals. So they have joined us a little bit early. First off, we will start with the one that was actually a free transfer. This is Hercules Delfino. He joins us from Palmeiras. He looks like a really promising striker come right winger out of Brazil. So that might fill one of our future homegrown club nation slots that we were looking at doing with that three and a half star potential. He looks like he could turn into a decent squad player for us in the future, especially with that 16 finishing and 15 first touch. That just might move Fabio Mariano into more of a Mazzala, a bit more regularly than a striker like we have been doing recently. Anyway, but Hercules Delfino was our proper free transfer from that recent lot that we did do. He joins us from Palmeiras and might actually get a little bit of first team football if we do get some injuries in our first or backup teams. Next up is Vladimir Moskalev. He is coming to us from Zena and is nowhere near as good as I was hoping he would be with it to take a pump with some of these transfers. There were players who were on my shortlist, young players who I thought with their age profile, we might just try and get our hands on them just to make sure they do become homegrown club and nation. Unfortunately, with that two and a half star potential, Vladimir Moskalev looks like he might not be that useful, especially being Russian, of course. That means that he is non-EU, but joining us from Zenit, we'll see what we can do with him after only spending 5.25 thousand pounds on him, hopefully. In a few years' time, once he does develop, he might sneak into the first team, or we can move him on for a profit. Then we've got the most expensive of these free transfers that we have made. That is from Manchester United, and Alex Dawes, he joins us, the 18-year-old left winger with three and a half star potential. So that might be our future winger sorted out, hopefully here at the club. One and a half star current ability, three and a half star potential. So there's another player who for now, probably going to sit down in the under 19s, but at least he does have a bit more potential than we did just see out of Moskalev. He's been sitting there in the reserves at Man United and hopefully in a year or so's time, once he develops through our good youth system here at Volsunga these days, he can work his way towards being a squad player for us and to wrap things up from this most recent lot of free transfers for the youngsters that we have made we ended up forking out about five hundred thousand pounds in compensation for Yoni Myers he is a one and a half star current ability free star potential midfielder come striker so yet again he is more like that Russian that we did sign not quite as promising as we would have hoped but he does look decent in terms of some of his attributes for an 18-year-old, that freestyle potential is something we can work with. A good solid rating there for one of our squad players. And he joins us, having recently spent time at Stande Liege in Belgium. So those are the transfers that we have made so far. They were all supposed to be free transfers, but clearly that has not been the case. But nonetheless, they were on my shortlist, did have their contracts expiring, and did want to join the club. So we went after those guys, and we have only had to spend £1.8 million on those guys, so not too big of a dent in the transfer budget. If we do go over to the scouting page, we have just manipulated things, so we do still have £5.4 million left in our transfer budget and £25,000 of wage should we actually need to sign some proper first-team players. But I think the main goal of this current transfer window that we are in 
depending on what happens throughout the rest of this Champions League season, is to try and really boost the depth and quality of the youngsters here at the club so we can move some guys on in future years, just to add some depth to the club in terms of our homegrown nation and club players. But I think that will wrap things up for today's episode. In the end, a very good come from behind draw there away at AC Milan, and hopefully we can make the most of that in tomorrow's episode. In the second league, we might also have a few more transfers by that stage as well. If you did enjoy today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying this series here on the channel, also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. And until tomorrow, where hopefully we can make the quarterfinals of the Champions League for the first time. Thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.